vegetable sowing dates right throughout the year. Every year I publish a calendar uh, of this and recently I got a question. <laughs> I try and in my calendar cover all the possibilities because uh, I don't want anyone to feel like they've missed a date and then there's no subsequent one. And so I list things quite a lot subsequently. And that this year actually has caused a bit of confusion. And I got a question on Facebook. This lady said, so you sow your broad beans nine times in the spring, like nine different sowings. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. And it brought it home to me that I, I, in next year's calendar, I'm going to do it more of an overall framework. Um, but that's what I'm presenting to you in this video. It's just anybody could use this as an overview of the many possibilities during the year, the key dates for all the different common vegetables uh, for succession sowing, for example, and why as well. Just there's always a good reason for why you sow when. So uh, we're going to start with February. February is still a pretty cold month, or here it is at least. We're in the oceanic temperate climate zone 8. It's uh, mildish, but not warm enough for most years to germinate outside. So it's undercover. And in fact, most of my sowing dates through the year are undercover because it works a lot better. If you want to sow outside, that's also fine. Uh, there'll be a few I mentioned specifically which are for sowing outside. And you would need to sow a bit later, normally in the spring at least. So. Mid-February is a good time to start, I reckon. I've found over the years, I've been doing this for a long time now, and there's increasing light levels and more chance of warmth undercover from the sun getting stronger. So lettuce, for example, would be the first one to sow in February. And then when do you do your next sowing of lettuce? So there's two ways you can harvest lettuce. You could harvest lettuce leaves, and for that I'd recommend subsequent sowings in late May or early June and mid-July, and that's it. Three, three lettuce sowings to take you through the year outside. There's one more you can make in September, but that's for undercover cropping. Then we have uh, lettuce for hearts. So you're going to let your lettuce grow and cut the heart. That you need to sow more often, because once you cut a lettuce heart, it's gone, and you need subsequent follow-up lettuce to give you continual harvest. So you would sow them, a, say now, uh, late February, whatever, and then next sowing could be April next, sowing after that could be early June, then a sowing in July, maybe one at the end of July. So more possibilities there. Then we have radish. So radish is a spring vegetable really. It grows best in the spring or a little bit in autumn. It doesn't grow so well in the summer. You get more pests and disease. It's inclined to flower, get elongated and get woody. So the best dates for sowing radish starting February and then March and April and then I will stop right the way through and do maybe one more sowing in September. Onions come in two different categories. So we've got onions for bulbs and they have one main sowing period, which is uh, late winter, early spring. They grow very well in cold weather. So you can start, start them undercover. Now we'll be planting out uh, late March, for example. And so you can sow them through February. You could still be sowing them in March, but I wouldn't sow them any time after that. There's possible of a late sowing in late summer to overwinter as a small plant, if you want to try that. Onions for salad, you can do multi-sowing undercover, works really well pretty much until July. Space them out by six to eight weeks between your sowing, so you've got those just a, a slow progression, not too often. Then we have one or two speciality vegetables a little bit like kohlrabi and fennel, and both of those actually flower in the middle of the summer, but they grow quite quickly as well. So you've got time to sow them, like February into early March, not too late though. And then you can get a harvest, like early June or through June, before they bulb up and flower. Sorry, when they're bulbing, then they're gonna to go to flower. And then you can re-sow them in late, mid to late July for a harvest in the autumn. But you've missed out that sowing period in the middle so, so some of this is about understanding how plants grow and do their flowering as well as, as growing the bits that we want. Then also in February, we got spinach. So that's a very good time to sow it quite early, again, before it flowers late May, June. So spinach is February through March, but I wouldn't sow it after that. Don't sow spinach. This is true spinach in April, May, June, July even. But so you can sow it again in August. You've missed the flowering time then and you'll get nice spinach to eat through the autumn, winter, and even possibly into the following spring if it survives the winter. Then we have the legumes, so peas and broad beans. 
Some broad beans over winter, you've got an option maybe to sow them in November. But main, main sowing time for broad beans is uh, late winter, early spring, because they grow best and crop best in late spring, early summer. You can, in theory, sow broad beans in the summer, but the results when I've tried it and, and others too have not been that brilliant. So, you know, you'll, you'll hear sometimes advice, yeah, you can sow broad beans in the summer. Yeah, you can, but is it worth it? <laughs> Yeah, so there's this kind of thing to bear in mind as well. You can plant potatoes in the summer too, but I don't think it's worth it personally. You get a few new potatoes. So then we have peas, which is very similar to broad beans, but I actually sow my peas more in March and in February I sow peas for shoots. So February is a good time to sow peas that you want the leafy bit, the very sweet shoots that they grow. Uh, you can do fantastic sowings, multi sowings of beetroot under cover in February, uh, also in March and in April, and I would stop at that point, and then you've got your early beetroots, and then you could do a second sowing any time through June into early July, and that will give you nice beetroots for autumn eating and also for winter harvest. Two more good sowings in February are, one is the large brassica family, so you've got options for cabbage. Now, cabbage is interesting, because so you've got different types of cabbage, and the kind of cabbage you sow in the spring will be cabbage for early summer cropping and they could be pointy or round. Sow them February through March and then have a pause before you sow in May the cabbages for autumn cropping like lovely red and pointy cabbage for sauerkraut and that kind of thing. Then in July you can sow savoy cabbages and hardy cabbages to overwinter. And the fourth option is late August, early September so just early autumn sowing cabbages, which are going to overwinter as small plants and crop in the spring. Then we have broccoli, which in Europe we call calabrese for summer cropping, <laughs> the lovely big green domes. And then you've got the overwintering purple sprouting broccoli. That one I recommend to sow in June. The calabrese types you can sow any month in the spring, uh, right up to June, even to early July. And that will be for cropping through the year, but not so much to overwinter. And then you've got cauliflower. So cauliflowers, again, read the small print, which type you're growing so you know when it's gonna head up, but that can be sown. You can start again mid-February, and I actually then don't sow it again until June for autumn cropping. Now that's my call. But you know, that's an idea of the, the possibilities you've got there. And even in July, you can sow for overwintering cauliflowers to crop the next spring, maybe. And then you've got the heat-loving plants, like chili, pepper, aubergine, you can sow them, I, I recommend sow them towards the end of February. Uh, there's no rush, but they do grow slowly, so giving them more time helps. You could also sow them in March, uh, but whatever you do, just give them warmth to, to get them going, and I wouldn't sow beyond the end of March. As we come into March, the options expand. You can still sow any of the things I've mentioned for February sowing. It's still possible to sow right the way through March. It depends a bit where you are and when you want to be harvesting. You've got additions now that are starting to happen, such as, well, tomatoes is the big one. And I know some people say to sow tomatoes in February. I find that 10th of March, actually, <laughs> to be precise, works really well here. It's, it's actually in order not to have too big a plant before the ground is ready and the conditions are ready. So work out when you think you can be planting tomatoes, whether it's undercover or outside, and so six to eight weeks before that is, is a reasonable rule of thumb that you can keep them warm a little bit. Peas, so I've mentioned pea shoots. Peas for pods uh, grow very fast from sowing and I reckon early March is a good time because then you'll be planting them out towards the end of March when the ground is starting to warm up, the days are getting longer, and you've got good chance. So, you know, the peas make a big plant often and uh, it's worth giving them that little bit of extra warmth to sow them in March, not February. Also in March, we got the first outdoor sowings. So that's carrots and parsnips, which you can sow them under cover, but if you transplant a, a tap-rooted vegetable, the vegetable we want a tap root of, they probably fall. There are ways of doing it, but generally speaking, I find it more straightforward. I recommend that you sow them outside, starting from the middle of March or towards the equinox is a good time. Equinox is a good time for first outdoor sowings and plantings in climates like this. Celery and celeriac. 
so why not sow them in February? Well, you can sow, you can sow celery in February for planting under cover, but they're both a little bit warmth loving. And if celeriac, if it has too much cold weather on it after sowing as a small plant, it risks bolting in the late summer. So I reckon mid-March is a good average time for sowing celery and celeriac. And then celery, you can go on and sow a bit more after that, um, but not, in, not after the end of May. Uh, leeks. <laughs> leeks and basil, I often sow at the same time, actually, uh, around the second week of March. And again, you could sow leeks for summer and early autumn cropping in February, but be careful because the earlier you sow your leeks, like the celeriac, the more likely it is to have cold weather, and that can prompt early bolting. So actually my favourite date, although I might sow a few leeks in March, for sowing leeks is um, early April. And likewise basil, you can sow it late March, but we're going towards April, so there's some overlap in these months now. And there we got two bulb plantings, if you like. So there's onions for sets. I've talked about onions from seed, which you sow a bit earlier. Uh, I'd recommend you don't plant your onion sets too early, so equinox time again. Over the years I found that's reliable, because if you sow too early, they can bolt. And potatoes. So one can plant potatoes early, but again it pays to hold off a bit. There's a lovely saying that later sowings in spring tend to catch up. They've got time, you know, going forwards. Potatoes grow really fast once it warms up a bit. There's no rush to get your potatoes in. Uh, you could chance a few early potatoes, especially if you haven't got much late frost. That's what can really damage them. So make sure you know your last frost date and pop your potatoes in no more than four weeks, preferably three weeks before your last frost date. So here, my last frost date, just to give you an idea, is the middle of May. That's on average. And so we're risking it if we plant our potatoes here much before the middle of April. But I always like to put a few in in late March just hopefully to get an early crop and you know work out ways to protect them from a late frost if it happens. As we come into April there are more warmth loving plants. I've mentioned basil already and basil you can carry on sowing uh, up until about July uh, but having said that one sowing of basil if you look after the plants that can be enough for the whole year so th there's options there. A uh, big one that comes along nicely in April is cucumber but not too early. I found mid-April mid is a good time for cucumbers. That's only four weeks before we plant them uh, under cover like polytunnel greenhouse. I'm talking about plant cucumber for growing under cover. If you want to sow cucumber for outside, I'd recommend sowing it uh, in early to middle of May. Yeah, no rush for these warmth-loving plants. Courgettes also, same story, really do much better if you sow them not too early. So mid-April, I would say, is first call for courgettes even going towards 20th, 25th. And 25th of April over the years is the date I've worked out gives best results for squash plants, particularly winter squash. It means they have enough time. We're, we're planting them out here. You know, the ground is starting to warm up. They, they do like that. Even if you, you've passed your last frost date, it can still be quite cool. And you put warmth loving plants out in cool ground, they just sit there. And that can even slow them down. And you know, result in loss of growth in the longer run. So that's why it's good to respect the dates, don't sow before, and if you miss a week, well, don't worry too much, you'll probably still be all right, might even be better. Uh, sweet corn, that's another example. You know, sweet corn does not like growing cold ground, it'll just sit there and look a bit yellow. So mid-April is your first sowing date for sweet corn, you've probably got about a month beyond that. Uh, there are early and later varieties, uh, but you could even sow an early variety and a bit later and it'll just crop more quickly um, but towards the end of the season. Then we have chard and leaf beet. So I've mentioned true spinach already, it's not the same. Chard and leaf beet are beet basically, beet leaves, and they do best for sowing middle of April because if you sow them too early they again they bolt. So that's one to keep up your sleeve and it also spans out the sowings a bit. You know. Like here, I found that propagating space, we haven't got a huge space, but it's nearly always full right the way through the year because there's this nice progression going right through. And then uh, one I haven't mentioned is melons. And actually that really should be at the beginning of April because melons take a bit longer to grow and develop as plants than cucumbers do. Cucumbers, I found, if you can keep them warm particularly, they just grow like a rocket. Um, melons just take a bit longer. They're 
for whatever reason, we're going to plant them out at the same time. But if you sow your melons in the first week of April, that's a really good time and give them as much warmth as you can. When it comes to May, ironically, <laughs> spring is just really getting underway. We're starting to think of autumn and winter more. And you could still be sowing cabbage, as I mentioned before. You know, there's lots of continuing options from the previous months. Uh, but one new one that I find works really well in May is Brussels sprouts and kale, actually. So that's two brassicas uh, that you could sow at the same time and, and look after them in the same way to transplant around the middle of June outside. And that's enough time for them to grow big, particularly Brussels sprouts. They need quite a long season. But if you sow them too early, uh, they can just get enormous before you really need them. And, you know, th this is a plant to crop nicely through the winter. One more brassica that is good to sow in May is a root brassica swedes or rutabagas. And again, they don't need the whole season. They can get too enormous. A good day to sow them is right at the end of May. So late May, early June, just one sowing. They'll chug away slowly through the summer and autumn and you can harvest them when you want to eat them in the winter. And then a big sowing in May is something that I know a lot of people do or try to do in April often not getting great results because it's beans. Not broad beans, that's a different plant entirely. So French beans, pole beans, runner beans, bolotti beans, all of those need warmth. And so that's why it's good not to sow them too early. It's not only about avoiding the frost, they positively need warmth. You'll just get better results from sowing them that little bit later. So here my best date is 10th of May to sow those warmth loving French and climbing beans. And you've got from there, Maybe another two to four weeks of options for the climbing beans, which need quite a long time to, to climb up and give you the harvest. Whereas the dwarf beans mature more quickly. So you could be sowing them uh, right up to early July even. Now we come to summer, high summer. How easy is it to forget to sow something because you're so busy enjoying all those lovely harvests that you've already got? but you will be noticing that gaps start to appear in your beds and summer is actually a great time to sow specific vegetables in particular. There's quite a few you can still be sowing, again, from what I've mentioned before, but new ones are, for example, endive and radicchio. And these are great leaves for slightly bitter taste, but which crop particularly well in the autumn when lettuce is starting to go off the boil a bit and get a small mildew on its leaves. So this will be endive that you could either pick outer leaves or that you can wait for heart up. If you're going to take endive hearts, you'd need to do another sowing or you could do a sowing from mid-June, then one in mid-July and one in mid-August maybe. Uh, chicory is for heads, so that's chicory to make radicchios, which is what I recommend because then you get the bittersweet leaves of a folding heart. They work really well from the first half of July. That's a really good time to sow them, but not beyond that. Otherwise, they won't have time to make their nice heads. And then towards the end of July, you can sow Chinese cabbage, or even into the first week of August. Uh, that way you avoid quite a few of the brassica pests that are more common in um, early summer, like flea beetle. Uh, I still get protection, but a good time to sow it is first week of August, actually. Uh, Chinese cabbage for making lovely heads in the autumn, and not after that. <laughs> and then also in August, having waited all summer to do it, even spring, um, I found it doesn't really work to sow salad rocket and mustards and pak choy in the spring because again they're coming right into their flowering season and flea beetles pests and everything like that. So wait until the first week of August and then generally the first half of August even through August is a good month for sowing all those brassica plants for salad and you can have lovely crops through the autumn. So you've got about a month of sowing for them. Now already we're into autumn. My goodness, how the year flies by. <laughs> uh, radish. The, there's actually some you can sow late July, which is special winter radish, and they're more the ones rather like turnips. Um, in fact, turnips you can sow in August as well. So there's brassica family come big towards the end of summer into early autumn. And the other big sowing in early autumn of brassicas is all of the ones I've already mentioned, like rocket, um, pak choy, as mustards, for growing under cover through the winter. So if you wait until mid-September, even the equinox, for sowing brassica salad plants, and then you can transplant them in October under cover. So that's a, a very nice option to have at that time of year. And also lettuce, lettuce and endive 
grow really well under cover through winter. They're frost tolerant. And if you sow them early September, that just gets them in prime position to go nicely through the winter. And then <laughs> there's not so much after that, uh, but there are just a couple of plantings I'd recommend. There's the garlic. Uh, I'm experimenting with growing garlic a little bit earlier, sowing it a bit earlier. Well, when I say sowing, you're popping in cloves of garlic. Keep your own garlic bulbs, break them into cloves, plant them around the equinox uh, and going into October. And you can plant garlic at any point, really, until February, actually. Then you've got broad beans, as I mentioned before, they could be sown early November, I'd recommend as best date. And to help see you through all of this, we sell my calendar in digital form. You can buy that from my website. Uh, as well as in paper form. And we sell a sewing timeline wall chart that you can hang on the wall. It gives you the monthly summary, just that overall framework. Cast your eye over it, just so every so often, every month, you know, just re be reminded. A lot of it is about that trigger. And if you want deeper descriptions, do have a look at my No Dig book, which actually, although it's called No Dig, it has a lot about No Dig. It has a lot about growing vegetables as well. And it, it gives you the description for each vegetable. Uh, not only how to grow them, but how to save seed and how to store the vegetables.